another thrilling episode of Prog Review. And today it's one of those ones. It's John Hassel's A Vernal Equinox, originally released in 1977, but recorded through 76 to 77. It's his debut, and this is the first reissue in something like 40 years on Hassel's Undaya, Undaya, I can't say, Undaya imprint. Um, and this is, like I say, this is his debut. And it was released on the 23rd of March, which was the Vernal Equinox. Wow, what planning, eh? What planning. I've been looking forward to this one. Though, I doubt many of you will watch this video. This is this is a video just for us. Just just for us, us, us clever folk, you know. Only the smart people will be watching. It's all those other idiots. All those other idiots will be watching, I know, Pink Floyd reviews. Um... So yeah, this is this is an interesting one. Again, I, I, I've spoken about this before. Very important record. Very important. More important than we can imagine because this is where kind of ambient music has its roots. You know, has its first tentative, you know, roots. And there's a in this. I'll show you it. That's the front. That's the back. Um, we get a nice uh, inner sleeve. See, the Ode to John Hassel by Brian Eno, which is an essay that was taken from an article in The Guardian from 2007. I hope he's got the rights to reprint that. And then there's this, which again, you can see the original mixing tapes that they've got. Um, do you want to look at the, you want to look at the vinyl as well? Should we, should we do that? Should we turn it into a mini unboxing as well? Why not? And there's the vinyl. But I've ruined it. Because I've touched it, but my copy is unique. Why so? How is how is your copy unique? Because I got a limited edition one, which came with a print of the artwork, which is nice. I did, and I've just kept it in there. It also comes with a CD. Well, this has all gone a bit wrong. Wait a minute. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> ah, I'm going to regret getting that out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, what a pro. There's also, I think there's also a CD in here as well, isn't there? A CD? Oh no, maybe there isn't. <laughs> what? Am I getting confused? There's something rattling. Ah! <laughs> there's no... Oh, well, maybe I imagine there was a CD. Maybe that's the other album I got. I think that's the other John Hassel one I got. The uh, the Farafina one that came with a CD. I'm getting, I'm getting confused. I'll edit this out. No one will know. We'll edit that out. Um... So yeah, it's a very important record when it comes to ambient music because we see um, Hassel uh, exploring his fourth world idea. And that, well, the idea of fourth world music is to create... Um, well, you, you know, you've got your first world and your third world. A fourth world was like combining elements of everything to create a whole whole new genre, sub-genre of, of world music. And he does this by treating his trumpet noises again using various I don't know trickery electronics I don't know I wasn't there uh, to transform his playing and again this this is very interesting because it is the very start and even though it features trumpet electric piano uh, synthesizer mbira congas shakers kanjira on track three hex Played by um, uh, uh, William Winnett. He does have people playing on this record with him. Um, even though he has these instruments, the music is, oh wow, what can I say? It's nebulous. It isn't as rhythmic. It is rhythmic. Uh, see, I'm going to contradict myself. It's rhythmic, but it doesn't have the pulse that his later rec records have, whereas he uses, you know, he has a bit more of a. Um, like I say, a bit more of a rhythm running through the, the, the tunes. This is even more. This is even more nebulous. This is even more out there. You know, this is you know wispy, wispy clouds, and you know it's there and it isn't, and it isn't it is. You know, it's um, a fascinating, a fascinating record. I can imagine that many people won't like it. Um, I've always, again, I've always found Hassel's work. Again, there's there's something in it. There's something in it, um, and I don't understand why I like it because sometimes it is so 
vague and nebulous that there's not a lot there. There is just this kind of spirit. I say, yeah, spirit. There is this spirit running through it. There's this, there's this feeling coming out of it that 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 entrances me. That that genuinely, you know, captures my imagination. And and that's what you get here. Um, again, it's very hard to dis- it's very hard to describe this music. <laughs> you know, gentle burbling. <laughs> you know, but it is not like um, his later work. This is, like I say, it's the first faltering steps this is the first the first imprint and what I found fascinating and I didn't know this before because I'd owned this previously but only as a download um, because again this was out of out of print for a long time uh, not available I've never I've never seen a CD of, of it available but I ha- I've got a digital copy by a, a probably e-music again it was legitimate legitimate mind so I was familiar with it from there, but I didn't know the background to it because I, mean, I don't know. I don't go looking at the Wikipedia page, um, but when I looked at the um, when I looked at this and and read up on it, I was astounded, gobsmacked. My gob was smacked that Michael Brook was one of the recording engineers. And then I dug a bit deeper, and actually I think it's actually on the, in- the insert where um, Hassel talks about you know what he was doing. The impetus behind it. Um, Michael Brook was one of his students, and you know, one thing led to another, and you know, Brooks brought in to, you know, help record the record. Again, it was in, with a, again a couple of all the people that he knew. You know, it's um, like a very homespun uh, kind of recording from from what I've read about it, and I didn't know that. Um, until buying the record, seeing Michael Brooks' name there and digging a bit deeper, I found out, you know, I know they were connected, I know Michael Brook, you know, and John Hassel were connected, and, you know, uh, but I didn't realise that Michael Brooks' influence goes back to 1977. That was a stand. I was thinking, like, later on, I was thinking more 80s, you know, 80, 81, 82 with Eno and, and whatnot. But, so, yeah, it was um, it was quite a shock to find out that Brook was involved in all this. Um yeah, uh, so you've got to go and listen to it. That's your homework. You go and listen to this record because it is an important, an important marker in the whole ambient field. I don't think Eno. I think again, Eno talks about his debt to Hassel. I think again, if you listen to this, um, you can hear where Eno got some of his rhythmic uh, and production ideas from. It's here, and you know I'd have been. Yeah, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall, you know. <laughs> Again, I find I find this stuff absolutely fascinating because you wonder where it comes from. You know, it, you, you can hear the influences of other musics, but he's done such a great job of creating something wholly new and original. And this is 1977, and you put it on, and it sounds like it was recorded yesterday. There's no indi- indicator that this was an album f- that's 40, 40 years, nearly, well, nearly 50 yeah, fifty years, forty-five yeah. <laughs> years old, um, and again, absolutely gobsmackingly good. It's just, it's a fascinating record. But then the hassle stuff always is. There's always something in there that, you know, that gets you, gets you wondering. Um, so yeah, do check it out. Very important record. Again, not for everyone. It's a record that, you know, that some would probably roll their eyes at and go, oh. What a load of pretentious tosh. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. But like I said, there's something in it. There's something in it. And uh, it tra- it's, I find it, again, transportative. It takes me somewhere else. And that's a good thing. And there should be more music like this. So, so yeah, we've been talking about John Hassel, his first album, Vernal Equinox, which, again, was originally released back in 1977. And this year... The year of our Lord, 2020, probably probably the, the last year on Earth, the, the apocalypse and everything. We'll look back on this and go, COVID-19, what was that? <laughs> I've dated this video. Um, but yeah, if you if you you do you do need to check it out. Do 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 go. And I'm going to be utterly and totally biased and give this five toucan oceans out of five. That's five toucan oceans out of five, and it's a, it's a lovely it's a lovely. Um, Re- reissue um, sounds fantastic and that's it that's, that's all I've got to say uh, next we're doing uh, the Brothers Eno and their, and their new record 
which again I don't expect anyone to watch either so join me for that one there's only one more thing left to say by now you know what that is and that is prog on